So may I invite the speakers of this morning session to the podium. So now it's the opportunity to, um, to a little bit discuss in an integrated way perhaps what we have heard and learned by all these different uh, European lakes. Can I invite uh, Brigitte as well and yeah. Josef Raffaele. Okay, this is the panel. The panel is there. This is great. So how, how do you feel after having heard these, um, these different stories? Because there are many topics, of course, in these stories. And the lakes differ and uh, the, the area in Europe differs where you are from the southern part in, uh, in Italy and Spain, and then Hungary we had, and then the two Nordic parts. Sometimes agriculture, sometimes active measurements uh, taken already to reduce the load of phosphorus and other contaminations. Um, what is best to start a discussion Maybe a central question to you from the French perspective. What have you heard is new or exciting or you want to raise a question? Yeah, there is. Est-ce que parmi les cinq personnes là, dans les organismes que vous représentez, associés à toutes les les études de, sur les nutriments, tout ça qu'on a vu, il y a des politiques publiques euh, visant à maîtriser au plan foncier les des zones tampons autour des, des fameux lacs. Est-ce qu'il y a des organismes de protection de l'environnement tels que celui qu a, que j'ai décrit hier, qui travaille avec vous et qui participe donc à, à la, la constitution d'un réseau de sites naturels et qui euh, également euh, ont l'objectif d'ouvrir au public euh, l'accès euh, au lac pour ceux qui sont moins accessibles. Si, si. D'accord. Euh, dans les cas de l'Espagne par exemple, de l'Espagne et de la région valencienne. Et la, pardon, et la responsabilité des eaux à l'Espagne, c'est de les organismes de bassin, de bassin versant de, de la rivière. Donc, ce sont la responsabilité de la qualité des eaux. Mais il y a aussi, dans chaque région, l'administration la, la régionale qui a des pouvoirs aussi vers l'environnement, le, principalement. Donc, en nous cas, le projet que j'ai expliqué avant, et le propriétaire de les actuations était l'administration centrale, la, la Confédération hydrographique à le ministère. Et l'administration la, régionale seulement fait et profite en réalité profite ce lieu pour développer la réintroduction des espèces pour faire de l'éducation ambientale un petit peu parce que l'administration régionale a leur propre eh, mécanisme de diffusion environnementale que Fernando Cortés euh, expliquera cet après-midi mais qui a, pardon, qui a plus d'argent pour acheter pour faire des choses, c'est l'administration centrale en nos cas, pas la régionale. Je ne sais pas si c'est la question. Any other of the panel wishing to comment on this? I uh, try speaking in Italian. Oh. <laughs> In Italia, in Italia 
E le attività di coordinamento sono svolte dal Ministero dell'Ambiente. Eh, tramite un'agenzia nazionale eh, che è l'ISPRA, che raccoglie l'Istituto di ricerca sul mare e quello sull'ambiente terrestre, ma a livello locale viene svolto dalle agenzie regionali. Il sistema quindi di monitoraggio e valutazione dello stato ecologico degli ambienti lacustri e marino costiere sono incluse eh, i laghi, le, le acque di transizione e il mare. E nel rispetto delle direttive della direttiva europea sulla valutazione dei corpi idrici. Chiaramente eh, lo stato buono ecologico doveva essere raggiunto nel 2016, questo non, non è avvenuto um, a causa diciamo, di, diversi, di differenti che non hanno fatto sì che questo impegno non, non è stato mantenuto. E inoltre per la protezione dell'ambiente ci sono i parchi nazionali, per esempio nel caso della Laguna di Lissine c'è il Parco Nazionale del Gargano e poi ci sono delle, delle altre istituzioni, sono i SIC, i siti di interesse comunitari, la laguna è inserita in un SIC, lagune costiere, dune e lagune costiere. E poi la parte orientale entra nella direttiva Uccelli ed è una Z, ZPS e la, il controllo e la gestione in, um, è svolto um, dal Servizio Forestale Nazionale dello Stato. E, per quanto riguarda eh, le attività eh, che dovevano in qualche modo svolgersi per portare allo stato buono eh, di questi ambienti, eh, parzialmente sono stati svolti in questi anni della direttiva sulle acque. E altro c'è da fare, un, un problema che già abbiamo a livello nazionale è quello dell'intercalibrazione, per esempio già a livello di analisi è necessario che i vari laboratori vengano intercalibrati e noi dieci anni fa anche dalla ricerca, nella ricerca scientifica non avevamo dei sistemi di intercalibrazione quindi tanto abbiamo fatto. Dobbiamo ancora farlo di più a livello europeo perché ciò io credo che sia necessario e questi incontri possono essere un, uh, un mezzo valido per poter aumentare il sistema di intercalibrazioni e valutazioni. E a livello nazionale c'è forte collaborazione tra, i, tra i, gli organi gestori e gli organi di ricerca, per esempio c'è una buona collaborazione tra CNR e altri enti di ricerca nazionali e università insieme alla, al Ministero dell'Ambiente. Speriamo che questo possa continuare nel futuro e che lo stato ecologico buono delle lagune, possa essere, de, dei laghi, dei corpi idrici, diciamo così, possa essere raggiunto nel breve tempo possibile, non solo in Italia ma in tutta Europa. Any other point raised by the people here? Yeah? Two, two hands. We're a little bit faster than, than you. Euh, merci. J'ai une question qui s'éloigne un petit peu du, du lac en lui-même. Euh, on a beaucoup parlé d'apport de, de nutriments euh, via les bassins versants. Euh, en France, en tout cas dans nos régions, ces apports de nutriments ont été amplifiés euh, par euh, l'aménagement du, du territoire, euh, notamment par les, les suppressions de, de haies, du bocage, euh, le recalibrage des cours d'eau. J'aurais voulu savoir si ces perturbations euh, existaient également sur vos bassins versants et si vous aviez euh, des programmes d'action de, pour restaurer euh, le bassin versant et les, les cours d'eau à proprement parler. Merci. 
So, uh, as I said before, the Kish Balaton water protection system, about the Lake Balaton, uh, we have a most biggest program to keep the water quality better for the Lake Balaton. And uh, in uh, this program, uh, it was a, a part of this program to, uh, uh, to manage to uh, all of the uh, treated uh, wastewater uh, out from the catchment area of Baraton. Eh, bon, je ne travaille pas à l'administration, je ne sais pas si notre administration a quelques mesures, mais je voudrais dire que mon opinion de le problème de, de, la, de la bassin versant de, du lac de l'Albufère. J'avais dit que la bassin versant, c'était très petite, parce que principalement, c'est très petite et sans, sans, sans débit constant. Mais quand il pleut, je disais que, que, que le débit a beaucoup de solides en suspension, parce que l'érosion, c'est très, très grand. Et ces solides en suspension, ils ont beaucoup de phosphore. La concentration de phosphore, c'est supérieur à la de l'estation de traitement de l'eau. Parce que les solides en suspension ont des phosphores absorbés, absorbés, je sais pas très bien, absorbés, avec des concentrations de terrain. So, et, et qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce que doit faire l'administration? Et c'est un, un projet, mais je sais pas si c'est développé. C'est la reforestation ou planter des forêts ou d'autres actuations dans, dans la, dans la bassin versant pour réduire les importations des séchés de, de ces types de contaminants que, il, il paraît qu'ils ne sont pas contaminants, mais dans le lac, ce sont très, très mauvais. Oui, si, si on regarde demain les enjeux de changement climatique, on, on voit que l'équilibre des écosystèmes sera fondamental parce que on voit bien que les infrastructures vont finir par s'essouffler en termes d'adaptation et que les équilibres des écosystèmes devront prendre le relais en quelque sorte. Moi, c'est ce que je retire un petit peu de ce que j'ai écouté là. Alors, j'ai une question un peu iconoclaste, c'est que pour faire entrer cette vision dans les décisions publiques, dans les politiques publiques, est-ce que selon vous, il y a lieu d'attacher ou non une valeur économique à la stabilité de ces écosystèmes. Euh, je crois que oui, il faut. C'est, c'est ma opinion. Mais ce n'est pas une opinion à le gouvernement de la région. Je ne sais pas pourquoi. Bon, sont, sont. Mais je crois que le maintenement de l'environnemental de services écosystémiques coûte, coûte de l'argent et il peut être fait payer. Il faut chercher comme le faire, mais, mais je crois que, que ça. So I can add some information about the economic analysis of what is the What is the price for better water quality? We analyzed it in the Nitro Limit Project for the northern lowland lakes, and the people were asked what are they willing to pay for better water quality, for good ecological quality. So they were asked in Brandenburg, my federal country, and Berlin, and that was quite different, of course. Berlin people earn more money, are willing to give more money. So And there was a a balance between what are they willing to pay for it, so that is a win, and what does it cost? So we had scenarios about reduced wastewater treatment influence, reduced diffuse pollution, and so on, the prices for it. And what, what did we see? The people want to have, they want to give money, and it is not a disadvantage from economical point of view, but the method, of course, is contingent evaluation method, 
they have some problems. So you, everybody will, will tell you, oh, yes, I'm willing to pay, and if I come and give it, then who will do it? <laughs> so in that way. So that was one approach for the economic um, base for, for, for improving water quality. Bonjour, j'avais une question en fait. Vous vous intéressez souvent à ce qui se passe à l'échelle annuelle, pluriannuelle, voire décennale, mais on n'a pas forcément un recul sur ce qui se passe à l'échelle du siècle passé. Est-ce que la qualité physico-chimique a beaucoup évolué dans le temps Est-ce qu'on ce qu'on qu retrouve actuellement est similaire à ce qu'on voyait il y a 20 ans, 30 ans, ou est-ce qu'on est dans un état d'amélioration de la qualité physico-chimique Donc je voulais savoir si dans vos différents réceptacles soumis à des pressions anthropiques importantes, vous avez fait des carottages pour évaluer comment avaient changé les les flux de pesticides, les flux de médicaments, euh, enfin les flux d'éléments polluants dans le temps. Est-ce que vous avez fait ces reconstitutions ou pas dans vos environnements In Italy, we have had in the past, in recent years, but also in the 50s, a lot of humid environments have been uh, studied and we have improved the situation but according to uh, you know the, the, the economical and politic political situation it depends you know on the area depends on, on the period of time but then of course we have a lot of pollutants which are terrible for health and one of the main problems in Italy was malaria and then afterwards agriculture and farming activities had a great impact on those environment so we decided we decided in the lagoons let's say on lakes uh, to have special uh, response because they had a lot of you know nuisances and damages but then in recent years we had a great importance of the uh, protection of the environment and all the profits coming from the you know uh, ecological movements and uh, uh, the protection of the environment uh, so when we want to work in that direction to protect generally speaking the environment then we need to translate uh, to, to translate different situations according to the environments because the environments are all different. They evolve in different cases, in different situations. So you must deal with the compatibility, feasibility of the uh, modification of, of the modifications inside the different places. So we had a lot of campaigns promoting uh, the, the local environments and safeguard of the local environments. I think it's compulsory to go beyond that. As I said, uh, one of the panelists, I mean, when you need to, to deal with global situation, then people need to pay, you know, or they think uh, that the safeguard of the environment is so important that they, 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 they need to pay for that. As you said, for a lake, for a lagoon, it's not only the fact, you know, linked to the local uh, actors like fishermen, activities of craftsmen, you must go beyond that. You must, like, you know, take into consideration all the activities uh, in, in, beyond lakes, beyond fishermen, beyond, you know, all that. It's really global. So we need to really um, enhance those aspects. Now, as far as the uh, lakes and lagoons are concerned, we have a lot of pollutants, of course, and uh, most of those are inside the sediments. And of course, according to the lakes, according to the lagoon, you have a level of sediments which is uh, changing. It could be even more than one meter high. So, you know, according to the situation in Italy, we have we have in Taranto an institute which handles those aspects and the uh, mercury con concentration. So, uh, you know, they also work on those different levels. So if you work on sediments and you study uh, the composition, then you can see how much mer mercury you have inside. But then, what shall you do? You shall evaluate a lot of, you know, disciplines all together because all those toxic uh, uh, substances must be, you know, uh, out of the lagoon, so we must safeguard the health of the environment and the human beings. 
So now we are getting a little bit to the end five minutes of this panel discussion. And maybe good to reflect once more to the panel from their different countries and different lakes and ask them um, if they could give each person by person the greatest challenge for the next few years, say five years, what do you expect is your greatest challenge for your area? What do you see as, a, as something that you really could achieve in the near future? And what you think, on the other hand, is the, is the biggest threat to your system? What could, could go wrong? And then maybe it would be good if there was a, a final view, either from La de Grandlieu or from the French perspective, to see if they recognize what the people from, from all over Europe have to say. So, very short, the biggest challenge, so what you see as a thing that could improve, what you can achieve, and what's your biggest threat in the next future. I start, yeah, you can start, you, you may decide who is first, so that the others can think a little bit, yeah. Uh, in a case of uh, Miedwie Lake, I think uh, there is still uh, the management of uh, natural fertilizers uh, is uh, still the problem. Because we have good uh, directives, everything is uh, well prepared on a paper, but the problem is to co close cooperation between the governmental institution, other institution, and uh, farmers. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the level of trainings now, I think, it's on a good level. Mm -hmm. But it's still, I think, we need more cooperation with farmers on the, uh, to help them um, to protect the environment. For example, uh, not only to push, you have to build a new manure path, you have to build a slurry tank, but also uh, to contact with them and uh, give some help. And uh, I think it will be um, very helpful for, for farmers. And uh, another reason, uh, another problem is still, uh, it's maybe, it's not an uh, agricultural problem, but the uh, water treatment. The, uh, a lot uh, problems were solved. Mm -hmm. The sewage system were, systems were built on uh, villages, uh, mm, but some uh, water treatments uh, plant are still not uh, efficient enough. And I think it's the two uh, most important problems for, for Medivier Lake uh, uh, water quality. Bon, dans nos cas, euh, nous pensons que l'objectif prochain c'est récupérer la végétation macrophyte du lac. Et nous pensons que, que c'est possible, peu à peu sera possible. Et j'ai l'espoir de que dans les prochaines années, nous l'aurons parce que l'année dernière, nous avions vu près de, de Tancat des tâches de potamogeton, un ceratophilum, et que s'extendait à d'autres parts du lac. Et c'était la première fois qu'il était si grand. Donc nous avons l'espoir de récupérer peu à peu, non avec seulement le son semi artificiel, mais avec toutes les mesures de traitement de l'eau et de bassin pour recouvrir les collecter les, les pluviales et subpluviales et tout ça. And your biggest threat, what? The biggest threat, mm, maybe the socio-economical factors, the relationships, I, sorry, <laughs> les, les relations avec les, avec les, les rizières, sont, je crois que sont les principales. Mais je crois que si je veux que la qualité de l'eau 
de l'ILAC et que, et que la, les macrophytes euh, réussissent à s'accroître, je crois que nous les aurons gagnés pour la cause. Uh, our biggest uh, plan on the uh, Kishbolaton uh, uh, that we need to increase the microphytes uh, on the lakes uh, and uh, change the uh, water level uh, politics uh, like we made uh, the earlier uh, plans. And uh, we need to think different uh, about the communication with the farmers and the anglers. Uh, It's interesting that the last uh, 10 years uh, they build a very strong lobby for the politics, the anglers and the farmers. Uh, and uh, you know sometimes it's not similar with the environmental uh, and the water quality uh, protection. So in Germany we have the very good situation that wastewater treatment plants function very well and point sources are not, the, of course, sometimes they are a problem, but more than 10% of nutrients input, but diffuse sources. This is the main problem from agriculture. It's the same, I think, here, different portion. That is one problem, and I do not expect in the next five years uh, improvement of the lake water situation, especially our shallow and very shallow lakes. Um, there must be a better awareness that it first takes time and second it's ex expensive and they have to change something. They have to change the agricultural policy. It is now, I expect, an increase in nutrient inputs. The energy policy and the agriculture policy, it's not good for water and for water quality. They have to change it in Germany. One response was the prolongation of the duration to reach good ecological quality by the European Union from 2050 to 2027. So, okay, that's a political solution. It's not a, solu a solution. And another solution they wanted to have in Germany, we were asked to change our thresholds For, for, the, for the good water quality concerning nutrients and biomass level. It's also not a solution, and I will not change anything. <laughs> so that, that is one. So it's a political decision uh, to, to improve the awareness. And yeah, it, of course it takes time, but we need also money for it. And we have to know what is the problem and what can we do. And in some cases, we cannot improve the water quality. The background is so high that it's a question of reference state, and you have to know it. And then, of course, you can give reasons why we do not reach good ecological quality. And last is that we should um, improve the um, complexity of, of the project. As you showed in your uh, presentation, that we have such a lot of ecosystem um, functions which can be used to improve the internal water quality, and we do not use it. So, yeah, that's my opinion. Uh, the lakes link, uh, on, the, on the shores, on the coasts, are by definitions uh, environments which are subjected to the reduction of the of their surface, even to the, you know, totally disappearing. So uh, it's high, very difficult to understand uh, at the beginning and for the whole community, for the whole society, it's difficult for them to understand the situation because it's also a cultural heritage, you know, and 
uh, even at the Roman times, you know, with all the wars. And they had understood at that time, you know, with the different areas and they had developed different uh, uh, conditions for agriculture. But now, in modern times, we know, uh, according to the researchers, according to the services, the ecosystems, uh, we know that the preservation is fundamental, the preservation of lakes. Of course, one of the main problems is, according to my vision, to increase the uh, interest, the actors on those places, to have a lot of people involved in those situations. So if you only involve you know, fishing activities, it's not enough. So tourism is very important because tourism can involve a lot of people. And I think that for the future, tourism together with uh, the other condition, which is, of course, fishing activities, together they could bring those environments to a certain level. And then we could handle, you know, the political aspect easily and then increase the, fin the you know, financing aspects and more uh, money and then dedicating more time and means to those questions. But, of course, agriculture all over Europe is different. And uh, as far as we have a lot of uh, pollutants which are uh, inside the lagoons and the lakes, it's very hard to be able to preserve them. So I do agree with you. And another kind of agriculture in lagoons and lakes can be done. You're right, absolutely and in order to have a less impact. Uh, but then we should have less pollutants inside uh, the nutrients and less uh, discharge, of course. Now, in Italy, we have done a lot for uh, the wastewaters, namely, but, you know, then for phosphates and other uh, elements, it was more difficult. So, of course, then we need to uh, see how, what is the link, you know, with the, uh, with the other environments, so the lakes, the rivers, and sea, and lagoons, and we should have a reduction of those pollutants to get in those environments, and one of these is the creation is to create artificial, humid environment. We were proposing to the local administrations this idea. It is a project to reduce the, the surface of lagoon, uh, creating humid environments all along the coast. And thanks to that, it could be a filter, a filter from the catchment area. But of course, then you would not reduce the impact on the lagoon if you do not modify the ecosystem and the agricultural environment, of course. It's always nice to hear you talking. It's like I, I hear the Pope, more or less, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to say that, but, but it's, it's, a, it's a positive uh, remark. So now we've come almost to an end of this panel discussion, and... Uh, Argentina. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we heard a lot, and, and I think maybe just to summarize, this is impossible to my opinion, but what I heard at least that agriculture is, is playing an important role in our considerations about lake management. That's for clear. The agriculture and the position and its state in the near future will become a major challenge to solve at least, and in more general terms, the surroundings of the lakes form, an, form a very important part of the lake, whether it's the catchment area or the, um, the uh, semi-natural or re-naturalized areas around the lakes that could play an important role in, in, um, in, in, in getting the, the water quality better. That's, that's also yeah, perhaps good to realize, and maybe for other lake systems also a possibility. And then I, I hear the word uh, integrated measures. That's not easy to do, but it is the future, of course, not to think just about soil biology or only measuring or only modeling, but we need to, to communicate with, with the people around. 
because we cannot say, okay, it's just the water framework directive and saying this should be done or this should be the, the standard. The people living around the lakes, yeah, and they need to, to, to be the basic yeah, bearers, the, 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 the people that, 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 that wish to have a, a natural and a well-developed and a good functioning lake instead of just a lake that is for naturalists where you can't come and it's only causing problems. So this is a real thing to, to think about. This afternoon, we, we, it's all about communication because communication is, is getting more important. And uh, the last session of this symposium is then dedicated to communication. If there's anyone from France, there is many, who wish to comment from the French perspective, this could be an opportunity, but we also could postpone it to a little bit later. Um, but I could imagine that somebody from France, from the government or from the local authority, wish to comment briefly, briefly, eh? and then we go to lunch, and already I say you, two o'clock, session four starts. Très brièvement, alors. Euh, bon, pas au nom de, de, de toute la France, mais au moins à l'échelle de Grandlieu. Euh, les enjeux sont très proches de ce qui vient d'être dit. J'en rajouterai peut-être euh, un, euh, ou la croisée de ce qui a déjà été dit et, et de ce qui a peut-être été oublié. Euh, C'est effectivement la, les questions des, de l'échange entre acteurs, et notamment dans une perspective de changement global, on le voit ces dernières années sur Grand Lieu, on a assisté à des événements qu'on n'avait pas eu depuis très longtemps, euh, en termes hydrologiques notamment, et ça vient sérieusement troubler euh, un, un certain consensus qui s'était presque installé. Euh, et ça, c'est une quelque part une nouvelle menace qui euh, apparaît et qui euh, s'amplifie. Euh, donc ça, c'est quelque chose aussi qu'il faut qu'on intègre dans notre, euh, dans notre prospective. Et puis, euh, sinon, je ferais presque que répéter hein, un enjeu de connaissance fine euh, à l'échelle du lac et puis euh, un enjeu à l'échelle du bassin versant. Mais ça, je, voilà, euh, ça a déjà été dit, donc je n'en rajouterai pas euh, là-dessus. Now, with these nice words, we conclude this morning's session with a great applause for the speakers.